My jimmies have been rustled, and I will not take the complete and utter disrespect that has been served to the VGC community at the hands of the Pokemon Company. I don't even play, watch, or know literally anything about VGC other than how it's an alternate branch of competitive Pokemon. I've joked about it being more cringe than singles many times, so believe me when I say that this matter is important. If I'm leaving the singles bubble to defend the players of the Pokemon Company completely fucked over, then it should really hammer in how important this matter is. After several Pokemon players were banned from participating in VGC events that they paid to participate in, then it must be for a reason that makes sense. Well, wanna know what it is? They were banned for hacking their Pokemon, with, mind you, completely legal movesets, abilities, items, EVs, IVs, and natures. Next to none of these Pokemon are illegal to use in battle, but because they didn't spend weeks preparing a team, they were banned. To give an apt comparison, it's like if you had to spend weeks buying a chessboard to even start playing chess. Chess isn't about the process of getting chess, but rather about the game of chess itself. It's like this for any sport or esport, and the blame is on Game Freak and not the player base for why this isn't the case with Pokemon. The onus should be on Game Freak to create an alternative better than hacking. If hacking is better than what we have, then it should be done to force Game Freak into making team building a convenient process for the player. If we discourage such behavior, it makes players unable to challenge Game Freak's outdated requirements for team building. This ultimately puts us in a situation where we're unable to strive for better options because Game Freak forced the better options away. This is why I am heavily in favor of hacking, as it forces these companies to actually listen to their audience and gives those people actual reason to improve their product. If Game Freak cracks down on hacking, it means that they aren't improving their shitty, inconvenient product, but are instead forcing people to use said shitty, inconvenient product instead of looking for better options. This could have disastrous consequences that puts us in a situation where Game Freak are content in not making sensible decisions, like just adding a fucking battle simulator to their game. Games. For the longest time, I tried to think that Game Freak actually gave a shit about doubles, but this proves me wrong. They don't care about competitive Pokemon at all if they're trying to get away with practices that are this scummy. But now that I've established my opinion, I want to call out some counter-arguments that I believe don't hold up. The main one is that some people won't hack. This may sound harsh, but I consider that to be an active choice rather than a disadvantage, as the people who do that should go into it willingly knowing that they won't have as much time to practice their teams as someone who does hack. Hell, I don't even think this is a very good point, given how Pokemon Showdown, a website you can access with just a Google search, has playable VGC formats that allow you to test your teams without even hacking. Of course, you'd still need to breed your team in game to use it in official competition, but you can at least make sure that your team is good for competition before you spend all that time. There's also the point that Game Freak has added a bunch of quality of life features to their game, which misses the point that getting a team is harder than in Sword and Shield due to the embarrassing new breeding system that makes it harder to get special attackers and trick room users with optimal IVs, and the boring as hell Terra raid system that makes changing a Pokemon's Terra type into a full-time job. If you want to learn more about how Scarlet and Violet are worse than Sword and Shield in this aspect, then I'd highly recommend I'm a Blissey's video on the breeding process of Gens 8 and 9. Not only do they make amazing content, but these videos also help prove my point tremendously. In that case, I have one final argument to make, which is in the rare case where someone hacks in something illegal. I'm unaware of how it's handled in past generations, but I know that in this generation, open team sheets make it very easy to rat out a legitimate cheater. Of course, I'm extremely against people who hack in Pokemon that aren't possible to obtain legitimately, and everyone else in the VGC community is too. That's why players who see something illegal on a team sheet can just report them out of the event. Not only that, but everything I said didn't matter anyway, as a friend informed me that checks for illegal Pokemon have always existed regardless. So, those were all my arguments. How do you feel about hacking in VGC? Did I miss a crucial counter-argument that you think will change my mind? Let me know in the comments. For now, I want to thank my Little Cup patron Wheat, NFE patrons Mystic Owl, Filthy Cubone, and Jesse, my OU patrons Reggie Mania, J3 Puffin, Eternum, Torkin Peter, Yoshi64, and Ghoul, and finally my Ubers patron Plasma Energize. If you want to become a patron, it would be highly appreciated. The lowest here is only a dollar, and I made sure to make my rewards worth the price. With that said, I had to fix the oil leak in my car, so I'll see you guys in a week and a half.